What's going on guys? Matt with PC Payload back for another video today. Let's talk about a follow-up. A follow-up to my video that I made the day after Computex 2017, just what, two, three days ago? And um, let's talk a little bit about Intel and AMD when it comes to the new processors that they have both decided to unveil to us. More so AMD simply because we actually know when those will come out. We know that the Threadripper processor will be out um, in some form or another. We don't know how many variants, but it will be coming out this summer. So let's go ahead and just say July, August. And the new i9 processors from Intel, which unfortunately we now know will be pushed back. Some of them at least will be pushed back until maybe 2018. So let's talk about this in a little bit more depth simply because we have more information than we had before. Uh, when I made my video before, like I said, it was the day after Computex, and as far as AMD's Threadripper processor, their new 16-core um, 32-thread processor that is supposed to come out this summer, we didn't know pricing structure or anything like that, which obviously to most people is the most important piece of information or one of the most important pieces of information. Well, we do, we do now know that the entry-level processors and, and when I say entry level they're still going to be 16 core 32 thread thread ripper processors will come in at a price of $849 USD which is very close to what I was speculating about in my last video um, I did say that their higher end thread ripper processors will be in that thousand dollar ballpark so putting their entry level ones in at the $850 price point is, is just about right um, now, what's very interesting about this is that if you take a, say, a uh, Ryzen 7 1700 and you compare that to a Ryzen 7 1800X, the only real differences are this guaranteed overclocking. Um, and it's been well documented and well proven that you can overclock a uh, Ryzen 7 1700 up to about 3.9 and if you're lucky you know with the with the silicon lottery maybe 4 to 4.1 gigahertz which is right there in line with the 1800x so a lot of people for value sake they just buy the 1700 or excuse me yes the uh, the 7 1700 um, because you know for a savings of almost $200 why not what's the point you know um, I'm gonna lose what three to five percent performance for a savings of almost two hundred dollars which right there is your motherboard so what i what i can see here with the new um red river processor is is it's based on the same structure so you're you're still going to get that 16 core 32 thread processor you're just not going to get that guaranteed higher overclock you're not going to get the guaranteed higher frequency which is fine because when like i said when it comes to overclocking I'm assuming, and like I said, speculation, we don't have any hard evidence yet, but based on what we've seen from Ryzen, we can fairly safely assume that you will be able to overclock the lower end CPUs. They will be actually unlocked to do so. And so we're going to get very close, maybe similar performance to the higher end, more expensive thread over processors. Now, at $849, sure, that's a boatload of money, and most people unless you're doing uh, YouTube professionally. I do not. I make a video once every few days, maybe once every few weeks if I have time. I do this for fun. Yeah, I'm probably going to be looking in that, you know, Ryzen 7 1700 range because it's going to be way better than my Core i5 6600K that I use now. But at the same time, I'm not dumping my, you know, my child's uh, college fund into my, into my processor. So I I'm still getting way better performance, way better editing speed performance that I get now, but I'm not, you know, I'm not breaking the bank. And, you know, hey, more power to you. If you can afford an $850 or a, you know, $1,200 processor and you do it for a living, then obviously that's what you should do. However, let's be fair. Most people, when they see a processor that say performs, let's just, you know, for, for fuck's sake, let's, let's say that Threadripper, their highest end processor at 16 cores and 32 threads. Let's just say that comparing that to Intel's highest end processor that's not out till probably 2018 performs 10% lesser. You know, it's, it's a little bit slower, minutely, very slower. However, 
it cost half the price, what would you do? Think about what you can do with $1,000. Not only could you literally build an entire system from your RAM to your video card to your power supply, the cooling system, you could literally build an entire system around that $1,000 processor. You could do all of that with the price differential between that and Intel's highest end 18 core 36 thread processor, you you would literally be paying for your entire system. I mean, th that's the difference. That's the point I'm trying to make here. And for the average consumer, that's just a smart buy. That's just the right way to go for most people. And it is entirely surprising to me that, that soon after, AMD announced their Threadripper processor and their pricing. Intel basically said, oh, wait, no, 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 we have one that's faster. It's 18 cores and 36 threads. Well, you don't have that, Intel, because you basically were reactive to what AMD offered. You, you basically said, oh, shit, we better announce something quick. Otherwise, all the attention and all the market share is going to go to AMD. So what we should do is announce something and make it faster on paper, on paper, we should make it faster, but we should say it's twice the price. See, it's it's just, what is Intel doing? Intel, from, from a perspective of a consumer, from a, the perspective of an educated consumer, Intel is in panic crisis mode right now. They don't know what to do because they're so used to being able to put whatever sticker price they want on a product because they haven't had that competition in the last 10 years from AMD that for whatever diluted reason, they decided that they were gonna stick with their pricing structure, stick with their status quo, even though they have nothing to show for it. They don't have the processors in any sort of relative time frame that we're gonna see them so that we can test them. Whereas AMD has basically said, you know, you know what, you're gonna get Threadripper this summer, and this is how much the entry level is gonna cost. Now, Intel can't do that, and they haven't done that. And it's concerning. It's concerning from a from a perspective of myself who who pays attention to this stuff, simply because I'm trying to figure out what Intel's gonna do. However, it's fantastic. It's probably the best thing that's happened to this corner of the PC market in, in over a decade or around a decade's time is that now Intel cannot just make baby steps of tech improvements from, say, like a Skylake to a KB Lake processor. Now they're actually going to have to compete. And that is a, a wonderful thing for us, the consumer, because now they're going to have to figure out what the hell they're going to do about their pricing because they certainly can't charge what they're, they're saying they're going to charge in compet in, in a, you know in a competitive nature towards AMD and to loop us in and to you know hook us as consumers they they're going to have to be able to sell these processes they're going to have to offer something either twice the value or drop their prices it's as simple as that so it's a very exciting time for this part of the PC market obviously we're waiting for RX Vega to come out from AMD to see how that you know pairs with the Ryzen processors and how that competes with all of Nvidia's products and it's just it's just a very very exciting time we'll see in the next probably six to eight weeks uh, Vega coming out and we're gonna start to see a lot more about Threadripper and we'll see what Intel's counter what their counter punch is to all of that information that we get from AMD so Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. As always, like, subscribe, comment. Please comment. I will try to reply uh, as quickly as I possibly can. Let's get a conversation going about this. Y'all have a good day.